Hey guys, Han Meditations here, and I'm so excited to bring you guys a new meditation album. Entranced to Serenity, streaming now on all platforms. See you there. All right, so I've still been thinking about that podcast with Neil that we did. And oh, if you yeah. haven't seen that podcast, definitely go check that out. We had Neil Bakshi on. He's an ex uh, vice president of banking at Goldman Sachs. He's a, what was that? <laughs> the next vice president of banking at Goldman Sachs. He's a really smart guy. And wow, that was such a powerful podcast. We did an angel reading with him. And ever since then, I've been even getting more in touch with spirituality and channeling and just being around people and seeing how special they are and kind of seeing what they can do. I've kind of taken that and being like, well, what more can I do? Because I believe that everybody has a superpower and everybody has something that they're more attuned to than other things. So for me, my thing is channeling. My thing is channeling. So I, I'm able to channel different energies, different entities, different beings, the highest vibration, which is God, angels, saints, all positive entities, extraterrestrials sometimes. I mean, just mystics. Yeah, uh, just different energies and different lives and different worlds. So that's my superpower. Essentially, is I'm able to channel that and I'm able to speak it and talk about it and really manifest it. And I'm also good at reading energies. I can read energies. I can sense energies. I can sense vibrations. I can tell when someone's upset. I can tell when someone's not having a high vibration, a low vibration. I can tell things about someone just by looking at them. That's my superpower and what I'm able to do. Yeah, and I think it's so awesome because I truly believe that every single person has gifts, some type of spiritual gifts in that way, whether they know it or not. And there's so many different kinds that you can have. Channeling in that way is just one of the many kinds you can do. A lot of people are healers. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to be a healer as well. Even that is a very, very broad term. But sometimes there's people out there who can just... People can just talk to them and get things off their sho- off their shoulders and feel comfortable talking to them. And that is a huge gift in and of itself. There's literally endless things. But What's I was thinking gift? about this. My gift? <laughs> well, my gift, I think, is still developing because I've started to realize what it is more recently. But I'm definitely a type of healer as well with my Reiki journey and then going on my Reiki journey, I realized that I also can take in messages and even more, more recently kind of getting more specific, I guess is what I'm really meant to be here for is it's just so interesting. I think we touched on this the last time, but our last Reiki session I started channeling totally unexpected out of nowhere. And it said these were the beings of light. Yeah, we definitely did talk about this, but quick recap, totally unexpected. They started saying they're the beings of light. And every single Reiki session, I do a little chant in the beginning, kind of like a prayer to keep things positive, call on all positive beings to help and come in with the with the healing. And I always say in all beings of light at the end. And they basically said, hey, you didn't know it, but you were actually calling in a specific type of beings. So that was cool. Next thing you know, just a week or two later, I start doing QHHT, quantum hypnosis healing technique. technique. And hypnosis and healing might be the other way around. I would just say QHHT, but it's the one by Dolores Cannon. If you're familiar with her, an incredible woman, no longer with us in physical, but she also has endless like I think 25 books and has this technique and I was so excited I was just doing all the classes whipping through because I really have been wanting to do this for a long time it just sounds so exciting to me and so in the classes she starts saying when you do the hypnosis you call on the subconscious and she starts saying oh this is what the subconscious is it's also the beings of light and I was like whoa beings of light interesting so we finally go ahead and do our first session. Of course, my first sh- session was my husband, Han. And I asked them, hey, who are you? Who exactly are I speaking to? And they said it. We are the beings of light. And I was like, whoa, what is going on here? This is not expected. 
Then we did a second session. I asked them, can we get a little more detail here? Because I know we're the subconscious, but it's also the higher mind, but it's also these beings of light. And they started giving me even more information. And they literally told me to write this stuff down like it's really important. And a few days before that, just kind of as like a download type message, I got that I need to start writing things down when I get messages. And just that's all I need to do, just write it down. And so then he told me, they told me to my face. So to explain a bit here, when you go to the subconscious, there's essentially three levels, they said. And another thing I realized, I was watching videos of other people under the hypnosis, and they just seemed like they weren't really as deep as when Han was answering. Like when we got to the subconscious part, it was like, boom, like his voice changed. It was like, you just knew it was like this all knowing, omnipotent being. It was really exciting stuff. And sometimes I noticed the other people under hypnosis, it kind of just seemed more like them, but like, of course, a higher version, like pretty much their higher mind. So I asked them how that could be. And they said there's three levels, deeper mind, higher mind, and beings of light. And the deeper mind is basically when you get those messages like throughout your day it's a step deeper than your regular physical mind, but you won't stay there for a prolonged period. Then there's the higher mind level, which we're all basically familiar with. It's your spiritual version of you, essentially. And they said the deeper you go, the higher you go. The higher you go, you deeper you go. So it's a little bit paradoxical for those terms. And then there's the third level, the beings of light, they said. And basically all you need to know right now is that this is a level aligned with God source energy, essentially. So I'm sure we're going to be finding out more because I actually said we're going to be learning a lot more in the next few months while doing hypnosis. So this is just really awesome stuff. But to get back to the original question, I I don't know. I guess I have, you know, with messages, with with healing, kind of a few things going on there, but... A lot of us have several different ways. And it's cool because someone can be a healer and this person can be there. This person can be a healer. This person can be a channeler. And so this person, but it's all different ways. It's all different methods, all different so combinations. So you don't know what your superpower is. My superpower is talking to the beings of light. Oh my gosh. What? Um, Kelly's able on? to, she's able to receive messages. She's able to be very intuitive and receiving messages is a part of being psychic because some of the messages have to do with the future. Some of them have to be with the past. She's some, she's seen some past lives from people without even putting them under hypnosis. Yeah. She's seen past lives of mine without putting me under hypnosis, just doing Reiki se- sessions. So that's, that's a part of being psychic. That's seeing information, seeing and getting messages from things that, are in the future or in the past and you're able to tap into that because all time is now. So you're able to tap into that, that space of where all that is, is from, which is very interesting. So. Yeah, I guess, I mean, I know I have, you know, healing as well, but I guess overall it definitely is the messages seems to be the most powerful thing I can provide to help people. Yeah, Healing, of course. Yeah. And you are as well. But it's just interesting because I know that everybody has their own skill. Mm -hmm. So what I would be doing if I didn't know what my skill was, like Kelly, I would be trying to develop myself as she's developing herself. And obviously, I'm joking. She knows what it is. But I don't (laughs) know. You just blank out when you get on camera. It's not. Sometimes you go back to that. Not you, but everybody. You go back to that. That school mindset where you feel like everything is a test. And then you're trying to find the right answer. But a lot of times the right answer is very simple. So the right answer is just basically what it is. You receive messages, you're a healer, and that's basically just being psychic. So she's, and I'm psychic as well in a way where I can see things and know things, but mine is more so of reading energy, like I said, channeling. And everybody's channeling at all times because you channel your personality. But a lot of people are more attuned to it than others. Like I'm more attuned to it. If you saw my angel reading with Neil, he was saying that I've been channeling these energies for a long time, very long time. And I'm very comfortable with channeling these energies. So it's very 
easy for me to do so. And that's what his gift is too. So he's able to get messages and be psychic as well. So it's really cool just, just seeing and figuring out what this is. And like I said, if I was you guys and uh, you didn't, you don't know what it is, just start doing and reading information and kind of seeing what you like and what you're attuned to. And once your vibration rises and rises, then it's going to come to you naturally. Like for Kelly, it just came naturally where I told her you're a healer, start healing me. So she started doing it. And then she started getting messages and all that stuff opened up once I told her what it was. And then I got her the QHHT for Christmas and I let her start doing it early and she's been loving it. And when she talks about it, she has a glow about her. She just likes this information. She's definitely going to be writing books about it, talking about it. And it's just crazy. And um, I really, really love it. It's so fun and just interesting to see. And it's also so fun to help people in this way and help them kind of figure out their inner problems that they don't really know the core of what it is and it always comes out in an unexpected way you never know what life is going to come out you never know what problem is going to be solved with the life and you definitely don't know what's going to come out with the subconscious but I think that's why it's such an interesting and probably the most exciting time in history on earth to be alive yeah because as Han always says we're in a time of and it's Anamnesis. How do you say it again? Anamnesis. Anamnesis, where we're, we're remembering. Re, we're relearning and remembering from the past. So right. it's just such an awesome experience and cool experience to be doing this. And I'm just like so excited about what's going to come next because the days are getting better and better. And I just released a meditation. It was a channel from God, message from a higher power. And that, as you guys know, my meditations are completely channeled. I mean, it's so since we've been doing the the QHHT, since we've been doing had the angel reading with Neil, I've been experimenting more. And that was the first meditation. And I'm really just honing in on it and just allowing whatever comes to come. And it's so exciting and fulfilling to be doing that. It really makes me feel just so good to be in a place where I can do spiritual things and just start to be, really explore even more where it's just it really is crazy because I feel like. I'm in a crazier space now where I'm able to explore even more where things are going to get crazier and crazier. And I've been writing things down. Like Kelly said, she's been writing things down. I'm really getting into a point where now's the time where you kind of just remember where you were, who you are, as Kelly said, and amnesis and, and just kind of get that going because you're going to go through different phases of enlightenment. And each time it's more and more exciting. Now is the, the time where, I've been seeing a lot of angel numbers. You hear that all the time. What do these angel numbers really mean? Well, I started writing them down and really just thinking about what's going on in my life whenever I see these angel numbers and it's starting to come to me in messages that the understanding of the different numbers, for instance, the number five and five, 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 that has to do with higher consciousness, higher power beings of like God energy. And whenever I did the message from a higher power, whenever I exported it, it was at 555 exactly on the dot, mm -hmm. which is insane. And then whenever I exported it, because it's going, it's dropping on Spotify on December 21st of my birthday. So that's going to be check out for that all platforms, actually. And whenever I export it on there, it was six minutes exactly. And then if you watch it on YouTube, it's eight minutes exactly. So all that just shows perfection. OK, but five, five, five is higher energy, higher power. And uh, because that's one of the highest it can go, especially whenever you're going with time and you're looking at a clock, six, 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 you can't really get that. You can't get seven, 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 eight, eight, eight or nine, nine, nine. But five, 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 that's the highest you can go whenever you're looking at a standard clock. So that's why that is associated with a higher power. Now. If you're looking at different numbers, like let's say your birthday is coming up, okay? And you constantly see your birthday, minus 1221, as I just said, the winter solstice, the shortest day of the year. That represents in itself the turning point in period in time in which darkness changes into light because it's the darkest day in the year, the shortest day in the year, the shortest day of light. 
in the year. But after that day is the turning point in which light starts to come in longer and for for greater periods in time. So it represents a turning point from negative to positive. That's what it represents. But if you're seeing your birthday, no matter what it is, it just means a more personalized version. We actually saw 1221 when we woke up today. Right, Kelly? You saw it and I saw it. I did? Yeah. Oh. (laughs) I must have been sleepy. I don't remember. But I, I take screenshots of it too. So, but yeah, and also as you can see right here, twelve twenty one. Whenever I got up, it's a very synchronistic number because one two two one. It's very even and yeah, it's just it's awesome. Yeah, but, and with twelve twenty one, with astronomy, like he's saying, like even if you look at the de- the degrees of how we're towards the sun, the degrees are going shorter, shorter, shorter because you know the days are getting shorter. And then after the 21st is the exact day that it starts going up a degree to go more towards the light, more towards the sun. So that's why originally winter solstice through Christmas Day was celebrated because these three days, it would go up the full de- one full degree, I believe is what it was. Mm-hmm. So just some history with that. Yeah. And so if you're seeing other numbers, OK, one, two, three, what is one two three mean now this came to me in the message as well one two three means that you're in the phase of changing and going to another level so if you think about it one two three each one is one step up so now you're at the point where you're gonna have to take steps up 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 okay and that means it's at the beginning phases of a new level so now you're reaching a new level and it's the beginning phases you have to take the first step second step and third step now, if you're seeing two, three, four, that means that you're in the 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 the, uh, the middle zone of that area. So you're in the middle zone of that area. So, and then again, three, four, five. That means you're going to be at the, you know, even higher up. Four, five, six mm-hmm. is going to be the end of it. Okay, because there is no seven, eight, nine. If we're just going on clock. the yeah the clock. So you just really have to interpret these in different ways. Okay. One, one, one is very synchronistic as well. What does one, one, one 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 represent? What'd you say? Or one, 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 one. Yeah. Yep. Eleven, eleven. These are divine numbers. Everyone knows eleven, eleven. Ones represent unity and being in touch with everything. So if you're seeing one, 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 if you're seeing eleven, eleven, that means that you are very in sync right now. It's time to even get more into that. It's time to step up and be even more in sync and be, you know, in control of 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 one one one. Two 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 is another one that's great. We got married on two two two. Two twenty two twenty two. That's when we got married. Yeah. So that is another powerful number that represents unity. It remembers it represents togetherness because you have two. So two of one is Obviously, two people, you know, what about twin twin flames, you know, about being together. And then three, three, three is another synchronistic number that number three represents luck. It represents freedom and it represents just being synchronistic as a whole. So if you're seeing threes, that means you're, you're very lucky. You have that freedom going and you need to, you need to take advantage of it in that moment. And then nice. four, four, four. Is, is going to represent different things to different people. But just in general, the number 444 is very synchronistic and it's very powerful. And to me, whenever I see 444, that has to do in a sense with business. It has to do with power. It has to do with just honing in on what I'm doing right now. I know that whatever I'm doing in this moment is there's an opportunity coming up. And I need to take advantage of it. So if I see 444, I kind of just look around and I just diagnose what's happening, what's going on. Okay, there's going to be something that's going to come up and then this we got to get to it. So that's what those angel numbers mean whenever you're seeing it. And for different people, it's going to mean different things. But this is just a general sense of what angel numbers mean. Yeah. And it can be very specific like that. But sometimes every now and again, it's just to get that message across. Not necessarily, hey, look really into this number, Mm -hmm. but sometimes they just want you to know, hey, you're guided, we're with you, you're on the right track. And it's just 
a nice way because, you know, the universe works with synchronicity and the spirit side works, works with synchronicity to to communicate with us. Exactly. Because they can just, you know, talk so quickly. We have to use all these words and these explanations, but they they think it's funny that we have to talk so much to get a point across, kind of like I am now. <laughs> yeah. So it actually, like Kelly said, sometimes it's just to show you, hey, you're on the right track. It's not yeah. always, hey, this is this means this, this means that. But I've noticed and I've been writing it down and really cataloging it. That's what it's been meaning in a general sense to me. So you can always just take that and, and, and take it with a grain of salt and realize what's going on. But let's say you're nervous for an appointment or something and you see 333, you know, everything's going to be OK. Mm-hmm. You can also see your spirit guides. So mine are hawks, birds of prey, eagles. Those, those are my spirit guides. So whenever I see a hawk flying by like we did today on yeah, the highway, like, which like was, we saw like a falcon. Us. And it was like, wow. It was like, wow, that's... Uh, and just yesterday we went and saw at the nature center, we went and saw birds of prey. There are owls there. They had vultures there. They had bald eagles the there. The bald really eagle was awesome. Yeah, they the like crows wanted to get like closer me. to them. <laughs> crows are one of my huge, huge huge guides so whenever i had my experience with thoth the atlantean it was a crow I'm trying to find this picture i'm for not you sure what animals are mine you can see this now these it's in a cage but huge. they only have animals that are rehabilitating so they don't yeah, just take animals and only lock them up and help I mean, them this get bird better was incredibly huge, and they so. release them back to the nature so yeah. that's why we like that one it's not like a zoo they're actually just helping the animals yeah but I'm not, I think butterflies are mine. A lot of times butterflies will come close to me. Um, I think cardinals too. Mm. Yeah, and, and even with birds, one of my friends, he's like, he's a secret kook, okay? He doesn't want people <laughs> to know that he's kooky like that, but I know him. I know this dude. So you, he can't fool me. He can't trick me. I know that we, he's a kook. He just doesn't want people to know. He's very analytical. Very left brain guy. He's uh he has a PE firm. He's just crunching numbers all day. But he I always tell him about these crazy experiences I have. And sometimes I'm like, this guy probably thinks I'm insane. But you know, deep down I want him to because that's what friends are for, right? So we went on a walk one day. He was in town. I'm like, you know, he's he's busy. I'm busy. I'm like, yo, let's just meet up. Let's go on a walk real quick. We go to one location. I'm like, all right, let's go to one more. We're just having a conversation. We're talking. We're laughing. We get to this park. There's these huge, these two owls, and they just we look in the tree. There's two separate owls, and we see them like swooping and, and flying, and then they just sit on the tree right in front of us, and they just start staring at us and start moving like really like weird, you know, looking at us moving. You know, owls move and they look weird, so they're looking at us. They're moving, and we're like, okay, that's weird. And then a butterfly came. And it landed right on his third eye right here. And then another one came and landed right on me, on my shoulder. And I have it on video, too. So crazy. it's not. So th- and then after that, he was like, OK, that's that's crazy. Like he had to be like he had to admit like that was uh, a high synchronicity. So now he's he's part owl. So <laughs> but what else did we do uh, yesterday, Kelly? Yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. You remember? Well, we oh, we saw a movie. We went to dinner and we went saw a movie. Dinner, little date night. We what, saw what movie a did we see? the boy and the heron, another bird. Yeah. The boy oh and yeah, the and we got close to a heron when we did your photos too. Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, we did my photo shoot. If you see it, you'll see it on my Instagram. If you, follow me on Instagram if you don't know already. But anyway, so we saw the boy and the heron. This is going to be very light spoilers. This isn't anything crazy. This is stuff that's like on the trailer, whatever. If you don't want to know anything, then Studio I understand. Ghibli. But yeah, I believe it's pronounced Ghibli. Really? Yeah, I always thought it was Ghibli, but I think it's Ghibli. Oh, wow. But anyways. Everyone says Ghibli in the U.S. Yeah, I, I, I say Ghibli too, and I'm going to continue saying Ghibli. But we saw The Boy and the Heron, and I thought that it was a spectacular movie. Now It was good. It was crazy because what I... <laughs> Man, it was just a phenomenon. It was a masterpiece of a movie because it just moved you the entire time. And it felt so rooted in reality, but fantasy at the same time. And 
One of my favorite parts about the movie was the main character, Mahito, even in the beginning, he's not talking a lot, is he? Yeah, I noticed that. He wasn't talking. He was it quiet. wasn't like they just needed to have a bunch of dialogue. And he was just observing his world. His world was changing around him. Things were happening. And he just walked. And you could just sense what he was going through yeah. without him needing to speak and talk the entire time. And I love that because during that whole time, you can just sit and you can take the world in. Whenever you're watching something from Studio Ghibli and Miyazaki, you just like to just take it in. You like to just sit there and watch it. Yeah, and what I like about that film and like the Studio Ghibli's is that they'll do it'll show really mundane things such as them just putting on their clothes and like it'll really like show all these parts that you would think would be boring, but it's actually really it like it really sucks you in and like you really it's just like interesting and then you can really kind of observe and it's, it kind of just feels like you're in like a lucid dream or something and it's hand drawn it's it's hand drawn animation you don't see that very often i need to start coming back and man when i tell you it's beautiful it's just it had a lot of callbacks from different movies and it just looked so good and man it was just crazy now this is a light spoiler i'm gonna get into but the old man at the end, um, the keeper of the whole thing. Yeah. He was the, the grand uncle. He represents uh, Miyazaki in a way because at the end, spoiler, spoiler. At the end, he was saying that the world is crumbling and he had to um, find a successor. The world was crumbling and he had to find a successor to keep the world going. But then he was hugging the girl and he's like, I have to let you go and I have to let him go. Meet, uh, what's his name? Meet Mihato. The, the, the boy. Oh, the ha- Hamid, Hamato. No, I think it was. Hato, Hatome. No, it was, it was <laughs> Meet Mihato. Something I like that. H-A- I know there's an H and an A and an M in there. No, I, I believe it's Mihato. Anyways, he was saying he had to let them go. And that's like Miyazaki because this is his last film. Mm -hmm. So he was thinking he has to let this world go. He has to let everyone go because he's 82 years old and he was unable to find a successor. That's why they haven't been making movies like that. And through COVID and everything, this took a long time to make. So he was feeling like I got to let this whole thing go. So the Mm -hmm. whole movie was kind of an homage to his own personal life because his dad he grew up in the 40s, World War II, and his dad was a manufacturer for planes. He was mm. upper middle class. And so that was, he was just like the boy Mahito, and he was like the, the old man, the grand uncle as well, mm. in that sense. So the movie really revolved himself, and he loves flight. He loves birds. He loves, I mean, man, that movie was just so incredible. It made me feel emotional. It didn't make me want to cry, but now that I'm thinking about it now, it really makes me feel emotional. And just seeing the world itself and how beautiful it was, it was fantastic. Yeah, it's just to see someone really live out their purpose like that and follow their passion all the way through, through like literally their entire lives and just craft something so beautiful. And you can tell how much it means to them. There's just something to be said there when someone creates something so beautiful and you can just you can just feel that it's they're so so passionate about it and it just comes through in volumes through the film or the work of art or whatever it may be yeah you can tell he's a true artist and he has man i mean that movie i believe took 10 years to make wow i mean he's 82 i hope he has one more in him or i hope he can find a successor because that movie was a masterpiece I mean, just thinking about it, it was just like, and you know how Studio Ghibli, every time, if we just look at the food that they're making, the food, and they slice into the bread whenever, even when he's at the sink and he's pouring the water out, the animation, what it looks like is just so phenomenal. The world building is insane. And I know that a lot of people were, even when we were leaving the theater, I heard people talking about this and that and what's this, but At one point in the movie, he hits his head. And then after he hits his head, he starts experiencing the kind of crazy world. 
So I know a lot of people were thinking like, hey, did he make it up? Did he go insane? Is it because he hit his head? It was just a dream. It was just a crazy world. But I don't think that's the case. But I think he did want it to be up for interpretation. But also, I think just him hitting his head just showed that he was in pain. And that because his mother passed away. And this is literally the beginning of the movie. The first thing you see. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think it's meant to be kind of up for interpretation, kind of fantasy. And I think with a film like that, a lot of things have many, many meanings to it. There's, I'm sure, a lot of meanings there. I mean, another meaning with hitting his head was at the end. Again, this is kind of just spoilers, but when the great grand uncle was discussing with him about being a uh, his predecessor predecessor Mm -hmm. for that world he was saying you know we have to keep this world essentially like uncorrupt and keep it you know nice and he was saying well i am i've already have corrupted i hit my own head and yeah yeah. (laughs) all these things and it was just kind of all there was a lot of parallels between the real world and this magical world the spirit world Mm -hmm. is kind of how i saw it that he was in and he had a lot going on that can really bring you down, can just... I'm just going to put spoilers in the title because we're just going to talk about the spoilers of the movie from now yeah, on. Yeah, basically. Because this is a spoiler review. That, so if you don't want to see spoilers, don't watch this. <laughs> but at the end of the movie, and to me, this movie, there weren't that many spoilers. Like, I, I mean, I wouldn't want to know, but... To me, I was like, it was obvious stuff. Yeah. Like, so for instance, at the end, it was his mom. And I knew that the whole time because I don't know how he didn't know. Maybe he did know, but he wasn't reacting. But because she was on fire and she had the prior and whatever. And when he first started getting visions. And she was saying it was my sister. Yeah. So it's like, okay, yeah, that's his mom. Like was just a younger like version, her is like a child, like a younger girl, kind of like his age, it seems. Yeah, but I don't understand why she needed to go in there to give birth. And why that she was, was saying, really I hate confusing. you and everything. It was like, what's going on? Yeah. That was like, what the what the hell is going on? And why are these stones and, you know, <laughs> and this paper? Like, it looks awesome and it's so cool. But that adds to the mysticism of the movie yeah. where you don't really know everything think and you have to think to about it. Yeah, it was definitely mysterious. Because first I was like, oh, this is how she truly feels about him. She was just hiding it. But then it seemed like that's not really how she felt. And it was just a weird, that room was just weird and like makes you, <laughs> messes with you or something. Yeah, I don't know. But I don't know why she even and went she, in there. And she didn't even give the They never there. even explained why she went in there in the first place. I was thinking, I don't know what it was, but if you go give birth in there, I don't know. Because it was like the people who were in there were dead, but the one person wasn't. Some of the people weren't dead, and then the things got up, and they made the spirits. But wow. then the mom was a, wasn't a spirit, but then she was going to live her life. Let me think But I don't know. This. It was It was cool because it represented a lot of things because seeing my past life and all that, it kind of made me th- feel think about that, like, this is like the waiting room before you be get born into a body and stuff. So. Yeah, maybe it was something like, I don't know. Maybe it was something about like creating life because the stones were basically alive. Like the little tower was made out of those types of, well, no, they weren't made out of the stone, but that big giant stone powered everything. And they were saying the pellet or the parrots that eat, that wanted to eat everybody, they're saying, oh, well, he eat her, but not the baby. So I don't know if maybe it was like the stone saw giving, producing life as such a precious thing and didn't want anyone to interfere. I don't know what was going on because <laughs> really it didn't even explain. But yeah, it didn't even explain why she went in there in the first place to give birth. None of that was explained in the movie. So I guess it's just completely up for interpretation. And you just have to kind of wonder, hey, why did this happen? But yeah, they didn't even explain why she even went into the woods in the first place. So it was a little confusing. I was like, why was she even in there? Yeah. Because he was like, maybe she didn't have a choice. But then it was like she was just in the room laying down because she had morning sickness or something. 
I yeah, don't know. I, mean, I, I thought maybe it was like she goes to this world because she wants to see her sister. She wants to see her family or something. I don't know. It didn't make sense. First, I mean, I thought maybe like the, the heron was reeling her in, kind of like how he reeled the boy in. Yeah. And like, but then it never really made sense about why the heron like to like to reel people in there. I think he was just kind of supposed to be like a trickster. Yeah. Because like he had like the fake mother in there. And then I didn't understand the uh, the feather either. <laughs> why, oh yeah. Was why was the feather that. so powerful? Why, right. And where did it come from? I was like, didn't the feather come from the heron itself? But right. then they disappeared, so they're like magic. I, I don't know. It, it didn't really make sense, but it was a great was movie. It was one of those movies movie. where you got to watch it a few times to get everything. And I do know that whenever Miyazaki, his he was younger, his mother was sick, and he thought she was going to die. She ended up not dying, but she had tuberculosis, and mm-hmm. um, she was very sick. So that's an interesting thing to think about, too. But anyways... So another thing I do want to talk about before we end is I saw my past life, which is absolutely crazy. If you guys want to see, well, we're going to start putting this on the YouTube. We're going to start putting transcripts of what's going on in people's past lives. If you guys are interested in that, please let us know. Just let us know because they're going to be on the YouTube channel and this is going to be very exciting, guys. So let's just talk about my first past life. My first past life was I was a Native American man. I had long hair. I had a horse. And I was in a a tribe of people. We had a lot of horses. And it was a pretty big group of people. It was a pretty big village. But it was just a, a, a pretty boring and mundane experience living there. And we went to a couple important dates. One where was a new chief getting elected. <laughs> I wasn't, I didn't have any feeling about it either way. It was just like, okay, this is happening. And it was pretty cool. Yeah, People were celebrating drinking water and eating and stuff. So Barbecue fires. Yeah, stuff <laughs> like that was happening. But then she went to another important day and I, I was a hunter. I was gone. I came back. My wife was on the ground. She had an arrow in her chest. She was dead. By the time I already got there and we had a son, I don't know. I feel, I had a feeling my son had already died or maybe from sickness or something before, but he was, he was already gone. And I came back, I saw my wife and I was just really angry. I was really mad. I wanted revenge really bad. And I was, Kelly was asking me questions. I wasn't even concerned about it, how we're going to bury her. Nothing. Yeah. I just wanted to get revenge. So I went and I, Went to go fight some of the people. I ended up four of the people. I saw four of the people. Um, I tried to kill them. In the woods. And um, it was, uh, yeah, it, it wasn't necessarily in the woods. It was, oh, okay. so, it was just, you know, somewhere, maybe by their encampment or something. But four of them came and then they ended up killing me. They cut my head off and they're like holding it and crazy stuff, you know. And I learned from that lesson that. I don't have to be as protective all the time just because that happened in that life doesn't mean it's going to happen in this life because Kelly and I were always together. We just work together. We're always together all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's just an interesting dynamic that we have and we both enjoy it. It's not like I don't want to be with her. She doesn't want to be with me. We both like being around each other, but just seeing that past life, just it really kind of, solidified some things just seeing that and knowing that and then yeah, that's why it's interesting because you just never know what the past life's going to be and what kind of lesson it is and what kind of thing you're kind of maybe just holding on to a little bit maybe it's a little more maybe it's a little bit less mm-hmm. but kind of just letting it seep into this life and something you might not even think that it would really be something you need to know or that it would be something through, affecting but, you. Yeah. Yeah. So then my but. second life, um, Kelly did it again. And I was like, I don't see anything the whole time. I was like, I don't see anything. I don't know. You know, and she was asking questions and just, you know, and I was explaining it, but I could see energy swirling. It was weird because the senses don't work in the same way. It, it was just, I can't really describe it, but I didn't have eyes or a body. I was just an energy being. It almost felt like I was just an orb of light or something, but I could just be wherever I wanted and do whatever I want. 
And I had the sense that I just worked with energies and I could see energy swirling like a, like a yin and yang. It looked like that. There's energy swirling and going around. And, but I, I would just work in those energies. And then Kelly fast forward to me. I had been there for thousands of years working with this energy and I was just content to be there. And then a, a huge light ended up coming down whenever she fast forwarded to the last day of my life. And it just looked like, it looked like a light, just huge, like strands of light coming down from the, from the ether of reality and like almost a huge portal opened up and I just knew I had to go through it. So then I went through the portal and then I was in darkness again and I could tell I was waiting. I was almost waiting to go into a body and it felt like I was, it felt like it was like before this life or maybe I don't know because Kelly was trying to get a timeline, but Mm -hmm. in that version of reality, all time, there is no time. Right. So I couldn't really, you know, guess I, I didn't really know, but it kind of felt like that was like right before this maybe or something. I don't know. There, it was, it was a weird experience, but it could have been right. My next life that I'm going to tell you about, which I went to because you told me to go to another life. This life was a life of an extraterrestrial being which was crazy because i was like even hesitant to talk because it's almost like you know like i was i was like very i wasn't fully awake but i was still like my conscious mind in the background was like like it kind of observing and was like this is kind of too crazy i don't want to just be making this kind of stuff up because i like et's and all that but then i cleared my mind and it was like became clearer and clearer once you go through this process it's like the stuff just comes clearer and clearer and it's like this is what it is Mm -hmm. so i ended up seeing two massive spacecraft i mean they were massive and they had a black ball in the middle but the longer i looked at it it looked like a huge building structure and the outside was a ring it was a saucer but i could see the metal and there was lines etched there were lines that would go around in the saucer and it was just, it was really uh, interesting to see that. And I was inside of another craft looking outside of a window, almost in a holding area or something. I knew that I couldn't leave that spot, but there were other people there, but I could feel like I had like three fingers. It wasn't like the normal hand. I couldn't see my feet, but it felt like I only had three fingers and it felt like there was some kind of, antennas or something on the head. I don't know if the eyes were on the antennas or something, but it mm. looked like the skin was greenish and they just looked like odd, odd beings. He had a space suit on too. Yeah. Silver spacecraft. And Kelly went to another, uh, fast forward to me from there. And I was in front of a huge planet. The planet was, it looked like 10 times the size of earth. Yeah. And it looked like there was more land on the planet than there was water from what I could see and there was a lot of water, but it looked like from what you could see, there was like a huge continent and a lot of it on the ends was broken up into little islands, but it was all close together. But then it just, we just did research and we just were there and we would go to these planets. We wouldn't always go on them, but we could get all the information we needed from the spacecraft. So a lot of times we would just sit there and observe these planets and learn about them. And it was fun. It was fun being an explorer and learning, um, learning about it. So it was just so awesome seeing it. And from that, I was supposed to learn that essentially, like, I'm not crazy for liking ETs and being so (laughs) interested in, (laughs) interested in them. Like you, because a lot of people did have lives, lives as extraterrestrial beings. So if you like ETs or you, you love Sasquatch or you love, (laughs) you know, dogs or whatever. You probably had a life as a dog or whatever. Very and you well don't even be. realize it, that you're attuned to it for a reason. So we're going to start putting up these, especially with the AI technology, we can start transcribing all this stuff yeah, and putting it on YouTube so you guys can listen to it and enjoy it. But what an awesome experience. Mm-hmm. And now I want to go under because I really do want to be able to see some of my lives. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take her under. Too. But it does a g- incredible healing, too. When you pull out the super the subconscious, it can heal anything. It's just 
I love this method. It's so incredible. So really happy to be on this path and really exciting to see the past lives. It's just great stuff. So thank you guys for watching and being here with us and listening and follow me on Instagram at Han Meditations. We're going to, we have a lot of cool stuff coming, guys. A lot of huge stuff coming. Just stay tuned. We're going to throw an event here in Cleveland, Ohio. At some point, we want all you guys to be here. So just stay tuned, guys. And when we throw events, no one does it like us. Just trust me. So <laughs> we're excited for everything that's coming. If you want to book a session with Kelly, you can contact us at hanmeditations at gmail.com and we'll get to you guys. So, yep, they do have to be in person. But I have to get in my 25 sessions as an intern. But Kelly can do Reiki healing, distance healing. As yes, well. I can do distance Reiki, of course. So let us know. Drop us an email and let us know what you think about this episode. We really appreciate you watching and we will see you in the next one. See you in one. the next one, guys. Hey, guys. Han Meditations here. And I'm so excited to bring you guys a new meditation album. Entranced to Serenity. Streaming now on all platforms. See you there.